Hello and welcome to Chair Interval Training, <laughs> brought to you by Community Access Yellow Springs, the Yellow Springs Senior Center, and me, Lynn Hardman, Silver Sneakers Flex Instructor and Baseball Fan. <laughs> You don't have to be a baseball fan, nor do you have to have silver sneakers to exercise with our chair interval program today. You will need a sturdy chair, and it's best that you always consult your doctor before you do any new exercise program. But you can trust yourself if you've been doing this all along. Nothing should hurt. If you have pain, stop. If you feel dizzy or out of balance, it's recommended you return or remain in your sturdy chair. So let's get this game started. You may notice I'm sporting my Cincinnati Reds cap. I was a big fan growing up. And did you know they have a Yellow Springs connection? Why, 152 years ago, I think, the first professional baseball team were the Cincinnati Red Legs. <laughs> and they were challenged to come to Yellow Springs and play at Gaunt Park, where we still play baseball, thanks to Wheeling Gaunt. Uh, by the Antioch Nine. It never happened. It got rained out. Well, there you have it. There's lots of other local legends about baseball in Yellow Springs, and I'm going to tell you about a really important one at the end of our game. And you may have guessed we're going to have a baseball theme. So, let's get started. I brought a little bit of fun thematic music. <laughs> you can exercise in your chair or on your feet, but remain within a distance that you can touch the chair and see it with your peripheral vision in case you need a balance check. Also, make sure your area that you're working out in is free and clear of anything you might slip, trip, or fall on. And let's get started. Take a couple deep breaths, whether you're seated or standing. started, I want to remind you to stack your ears over your shoulders, over your hips, whether you're seated or standing. This good posture makes your movements easier, and it makes it easier to breathe as well. So, take a nice deep breath, and let's warm up, because that's the most important part of your exercise, honestly. You can warm up marching in place, whether you're seated or standing. Just moving gently, starting with a smaller range of motion, especially through your shoulders and your hips. These ball and socket joints need a little lubrication. Ah, okay. If you like, you can just widen out your stance a little. And stay next to your chair or behind it, but I'm going to sneak out front so you can see what I'm doing on my feet. Nice wide stance. We can rock side to side, bending through our hips, knees, and ankles to a lowish mini squat, also called an athletic stance or a defensive stance. And we can just pull the shoulder one at a time toward the earlobes. Maybe roll it back. See how that feels? Good. We can roll that shoulder backward or we can try it forward. Remember, these are suggested movements. If something I'm doing doesn't work for you today, listen to your body and go back to the last movement that felt good to you. We can open and close our shoulders and chest. We can even rotate a little through our body. Easy does it. Lift that rear heel so you don't torque or twist your knee. Pull your navel in. And maybe you like to swing. You might be a righty. Or you might be a lefty. Maybe you're a switch hitter. It's just good to move in all of the ways that our body is designed to move, gently at first, and then maybe a little bit more vigorous as you feel able, reaching overhead, 
just getting warmed up. Great, let's bring it back to that march in place. All right, now, if you like, I'm gonna march over to the sides and I'll kick my chair. We can just tap our heels out front and swing our arms through, opposite arm going forward with the leg. This cross crawl pattern may seem simple, but it helps connect our brain and body for better coordination. And better coordination lowers our risk of falls. So we're gonna work on coordination, balance, agility, and as we do, we're gonna strengthen our heart and lungs. You know the game. We'll also strengthen our major skeletal muscles. And we'll work a little bit on flexibility, relaxation, and breathing. Good thing we got nine innings. <laughs> Okay, let's try to tap our toes back. Keep the head tall. This is a little harder in the chair. And see if we can get those cross crawl arms going again. So, it seems counterintuitive, but the opposite arm goes back when the heel or the toe goes back. Stay where you're at, use your chair as you need it, but I'm gonna show you from the side. A lot of times people have trouble with this pattern. Don't worry if you don't get it. Just keep practicing. All right. So we moved our shoulders in this uh, many different ways and that was the whole point of that. <laughs> but let's review or preview a couple of patterns we're gonna use today. One's super simple and it's about balance. We're gonna call it single, double, or home run. And that's how many bases or how many lifts we're gonna do with our knees. Singles, one each side. Got your chair there for balance if you need it. Now let's hit a double, two each side. And we can balance by touching that chair. We can check our balance or touching our toe down. We know this pattern. Let's hit a home run or four bases, four lifts. Woo, I got new shoes on and I feel not as quite well balanced as I normally feel, but I'll get used to them. All right, you can march it out again. So that's one pattern. The other one's gonna be a little bit new, but I have faith in you. We're gonna learn how to pitch, hit, and run the bases. Are you ready? Make sure you can touch your chair with your left hand. Most of you are righties, so I'm gonna teach you a basic pitching form that involves a rock back, a balance, step and throw with our right hand. So put an imaginary ball on your hand. You can keep your left hand on your chair. We're gonna take our left foot and a rock back, recover on your right, Pull that left knee up and balance, then step and throw. So that was really slow. Let's do that again, really slow. Rock back on the left, balance on that left knee, step and throw with the right. Again, rock back, balance, step and throw. A little bit faster, rock back, balance, step, Throw. You can keep that left hand on your chair the whole time. You could do a sidearm if your shoulder doesn't like that overhand or an underhand pitch. Rock back, balance, step, throw. We're gonna learn to do that on both sides, which is a stretch. And then we're gonna hit and run. So behind your chair, make sure you've got a base path and you don't have to run fast. But let's grab that bat with the right hand, right elbow up. And then if you feel well balanced in your athletic stance, grab with that left hand underneath the right. Okay, eye the ball, it's coming from there. And we're gonna step and swing. Whoops, we missed, let's try it again. Step and swing, whoops, we missed. Third time's a charm, hit that ball. And then run to first. 
And now we're going to do it from the other side. Got our chair there in our athletic stance. Left elbow up, right hand below that left elbow. And step, swing. Oops, we missed again. Again, step, swing. Well, third time's a charm. Hit that ball and run as fast as you like. Got it? Good. Let's continue warming up. Come along to the front of your chair, or today we're going to call it our bench. <laughs> Make sure your feet are close to the bench so that when you hinge at your hips, keep your head up, you're going to land on that bench safely. And when we're in the dugout, <laughs> on our bench, that's the best time to get a sip of water. Luckily for me, it wasn't glass. I've got some sturdy BPA-free plastic water container. Here's to your health and safety. Ooh. Okay, let's get a little stretch in, yeah? Our warm muscles are a little bit more elastic now, but we're not going for our biggest flexibility right now. We're just getting ready for the game. And the game is our chair interval training. So sit tall at the edge of your chair, shoulders up, back, and down. Tuck them in your rear pockets and stretch out your right leg, stretch out your left. Show me the spikes on the bottom of your baseball shoes. Not, not really ideal for working out on your floor here at home. And stretch your opposite hand. If it hurts your lower back, to lift your foot in the air and get this sort of dynamic hamstring stretch. You can just stretch it out on the ground, that's fine. But toes up, fingers too. And let's say hello, both sides. So flex, point, flex, sit tall. And one more, and let's stretch a bit on that right leg. Whenever you hinge forward, Keep your body long and strong, and keep your chin up. We want to avoid lowering our head below the level of our heart because it puts us at greater risk for being dizzy. And we support on our lap to protect our lower back. Oh, now, pull the navel in. By bracing with our abdominals, we're also supporting our lower back. And rotate that right ankle one way and then the other. You can bow your head towards your knee if you like. And let's try that same series of stretches on the left. Supporting here, breathe in. Ah, as we hinge forward, we're bracing with our strong abdominals and with our arm. Lifting toes and fingers up and then down. Did I forget to do the down on the other side? I might have. <laughs> All right, now sitting up tall, pull that navel in, draw the knee toward the chest and draw big flowy circles with that left ankle, one way and then the other, maybe bow your head again towards your knee, and just like that, we are a little bit more ready to move our bodies, taking a deep breath. Let's talk about intensity. How about if we use our good old scale from one to 10 for perceived exertion? Because how we feel we are exerting ourselves is spot on. Research shows it's a better indicator than pulse because we could be counting wrong or, or many other factors. So one is your lowest intensity, 10 is way too much. Let's aim for a happy medium of four to seven. Eight is where you feel like you can't really continue going at that pace. So let's start out with our coordination challenge. I'm going to show it in the chair once, but we're going to rock back and pitch. Rock back left, balance left knee up, step and throw that ball with your right hand. And then we're going to be at bat and we're going to swing three times. Step, swing. Recover, step, swing, recover. This time hit it and run. 
Now, you can do that in your chair, or you may already be on your feet. But do me a favor, double check yourself, make sure you touch that chair, and be just ever so slightly behind it so you've got a clear base path behind the chair. And we're gonna just use our left hand for balance, best posture, imaginary ball on your right hand, you can keep that left hand on that chair the whole time and rock back on your left foot. Balance with the left knee up, step and throw. Recover, let's do it again. If your balance is good, you can bring your other hand up. Step and throw, recover. One more time, slow and balance. Step and throw. Remember, you can be a side arm. Let's do it a little bit faster. Step and throw. Rock back knee, step and throw. Use your chair as you need. No shame in that. Here we go, say rock back balance, step, throw. Rock back balance, step, throw. Here's my side arm, are you ready? <laughs> Here's my other hand pitch, are you ready? It's time to hit. Get yourself in that low athletic stance, clear base path, right elbow up, Joe Morgan style. Swing and recover. Get down and swing, recover. One more time, hit it. Bam, now we're gonna run as fast as you like. To the other side. <laughs> now, we're gonna use our left elbow up, get down in your nice athletic stance. Step and swing, yes, recover. Do it again, step and swing, recover. Hit it, boom, and run as fast as you can. Hey, I forgot about fielding. Let's work on our footwork. It's called a crow's hop or a one, two, three. We're gonna get down, reach for that ball, and then one, two, three. Got it? Reach down, get the ball, and one, two, three. Let's do it slow a couple more times. Reach down, keep your head up, one, two, three. You can keep your hand on the chair the whole time, one, two, three. Reach down, use your left, right, left. Reach down, use your left, right, left. I'm sorry, that was right. Left, right, left. Now, right, left, right. So your leaning foot goes first. Do you think we could do that twice as fast? Let's try it. Whoop, and, whoop, and, one, two, three, whoop, and, one, two, three. And if you can't, add a throw. Just move right and left, however you feel best. You can get low and just tap tap. A little hop. One, two, three. One, two, three. I'm getting my heart rate up. How about you? All right. Well, we started this inning pitching with the right hand. We need a relief pitcher now. Put that imaginary ball in your left hand. Make sure your right hand can touch the chair. We're gonna take that right leg and rock back. Balance, right knee up, step, throw. Rock back, balance, step, throw. Rock back, balance, step, throw. If your balance is good, you can take that other hand up. Rock back, balance, step. Throw, say it with me, rock, back, balance, step, throw. Maybe you're more comfortable with that sidearm delivery or underhand. Good, rock, back, balance, step, just, just don't balk. That is, pretend to throw the ball. Rock, back, balance, one more time. I'm a lefty, so this feels awkward on this side. Just actually my right. But anyway, okay, time to hit it. Make sure that base path is clear for you. Sink down into your athletic stance. 
Keep that left elbow up. Right hand underneath. Four on your chair. Step. Swing. Use your body. Pull your navel in. This time we're going to hit and run. Here we go. Oh. And as fast as you can move your feet. Oh, we got a double. <laughs> Let's try that hit again. Sink down into your athletic stance. Left elbow up. Step, swing. You can use your chair. Step, swing. We're going to hit and run. Are you ready? Step, swing. This time it's a triple. First base, keep going. Second base. Third base. Shoo, we made it. Okay. Now, we're going to try our fielding one more time. I wasn't the best example, but I need you to be behind your chair so you can use it as your balance check. But I want you to see what I'm doing with my feet. So you got your chair, you're behind your chair. You got your clear base path. You're going to field the ball and then you're going to step left, right, and left. Field the ball and step right, left, right. Field the ball, left, right, left. Field the ball. Right, left, right. Feel the ball. One, two, three. It's called a crow's hop. One, two, three. We're doing it slow. One more time. Three. Each way. One, two, three. Now a little faster. One, two, three. 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 This is pretty athletic. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Reach. Keep your chin up. Oops, I messed that up. I have to concentrate. Left, right, left. Right, left, right. Left, right, left. Right, left, right. <laughs> March it out. How are you doing? Let's assign a number to our perceived exertion. Hmm. Honestly, I feel like a six. I feel good. But I'm getting a little breathy. My heart is beating stronger. And I'm warm and I can talk. How about you? Are you ready to transition to some strength work? Well, let's go. Did you know that regular strength training and flexibility together will reduce our rate of injuries? Honest to goodness, this is evidence-based exercise. All right. So hinge your hips back. Squat down. Make sure your feet are close to that chair, or as we called it earlier, our bench. Charge! Charge! <laughs> Time for our strength training. So hats off to you and to all of those people that make this possible. I am not kidding. It has been well over a year and I'm so glad we could offer these classes to you direct to in your home safely. But the weather's getting nicer so we can go outdoors sometimes. Hopefully soon. We are going to use our tubing first. But please step to the side Lean to the side, brace with your strong abdominals and your arm on your lap and grab a sip of water. We're going to use this tubing to do a number of exercises. We're going to be back in our chair because this you'll have an option of doing squats if you feel like it's within your strong uh, and safe abilities today. So I'm going to show you an upper body exercise called a lat pull down to strengthen your upper back and shoulders and biceps. Then if you choose to squat, you want your heels touching the front legs of your chair and your hips well back in the chair. Even if you don't squat, I want you to dig your heels in figuratively and, and um, literally. We're going to hold the band so that it's got a little bit of basement tension on it, straight and taut like a rubber band. 
wrist straight. We're gonna pull that tube down towards our collarbone, tucking our elbows back. And then we're gonna reach for, oh, maybe where the ceiling meets the wall. So our arms are tracing a diagonal line. You can make it less diagonal if reaching overhead hurts you. You can make it more horizontal. But squeeze those shoulder blades together behind you and breathe. Now, take a break with your arms. Dig your heels in and all 10 toes and see how it feels to pretend to get up. Hmm. If nothing hurt, try it again. Squeeze your hips forward and tighten up your hips. Then get them back, but this time don't sit down. If you want to squat, your arms will go forward as a counterbalance to your hips. And if you wanted to add that lat pull down, your arms are forward and up as your bottom goes down. And then you squeeze your elbows back as your hips squeeze forward. And of course, breathe. Do your best. Maybe eight more. Eek. Or maybe just one more, but make it your best. If you're sitting in your chair, dig those heels in and push all 10 toes into the floor to strengthen your muscles isometrically. And breathe. Awesome. That was a great total body exercise. We're going to transition to working the front muscles of the torso with a chest press and a shoulder press. So take that too, put it behind your upper back, under your arms, please. So if you could press quite easily, you want, and, and that's not challenging, I want you to grab the tube a little closer to your shoulders and see how it feels to straighten your arms, close your shoulders and chest in front of you. Ah, nice, now we're working. This is strengthening chest, anterior shoulder muscles, and triceps. Now, if we wanted to do a middle body or core exercise, let's just bring our hands to our chest and focus on our abdominals. Hips are walking right to the edge of your chair, please. And we're gonna tuck the tailbone under and lean back, pulling that navel in like we've zipped up tight trousers. And we move back and forth. Keeping the back of the neck long and breathing. Ideally, exhale as you slide forward, but not quite to upright, because then you don't have any resistance working against your abdominals. Now, if you want, we can add those chest presses back in. Ooh, that makes it harder with our elbows going back. You can do the chest press on its own. You could do the abdominal slides on their own, or you could put them together and you could add a little leg extension, right and left or not. You could do the leg extensions on their own and strengthen the fronts of your thighs. And let's add a right and left opposite. So now just opposite arm and rotate the body a little. Maybe reach for the outside of that foot. We're working hard today, so I'm trusting you to go at your own pace. One more each side if you like. Whew. Nice. Okay, one more exercise. We're gonna use the tube under our feet this time. So Pick up your right foot, then your left. Put it on the band so that it's right in the middle of your foot. Handles equal length on either side and then crisscross them. Give yourself a little space between your thighs. Draw your hands close to your abdomen. Palms facing your abdomen, thumbs facing one another. And pull up your body, keeping hands close to the body to perform an upright row, which works upper back, mid back, and the tops of our shoulders now. And if you like, you can combine this exercise with a hip abduction. 
Keeping your body straight and tall, you can step out to the right, step out to the left. We just did a lot of strength exercises in a short period of time. But what's most important is that you challenge yourself regularly. Strength work, we don't need to do every day. Every other day would be fine. And then cardiovascular work or aerobic activity, every day is best. You can take a day off here and there, but the body needs to move. And the brain works better when the body moves. So, take a break from our strength work. Release the tension, step off of that, and let's get a sip of water. And focus more on our aerobic health. Again, be mindful, stepping to the side, leaning to the side, racing with your abdominals and your arms. These habits will help save your lower back from a greater risk of injury. Who wants to be injured? Okay, we've played our sports skills games. This time we're gonna work on our singles doubles and home run balance routine. I'm gonna show you here in the chair, but if you are not feeling too rocky in your boat, please, you're encouraged to be on your feet, on the right side, using your chair as your balance check. If you're in your chair, sit tall. If you're standing, stand tall, and let's lift those knees right and left. You got your chair for balance. Now, if we're doing this in the chair for an extended period of time, you're going to feel soreness on the tops of your thighs. So you might have to get creative, pull those heels back, or kick those heels front, but just keep moving, yeah? I'm going to transition to my feet. You guys keep moving. Right knee, left knee, right knee. You got it. Okay. You can swing those opposite arms. If you want to make it more athletic, you can kind of add a little fake skip there. Or you can make it smaller. Or you can keep your hand on your chair the whole time. These are singles. Three more. Two. Double up. Two. We're hitting a double now. Extra bases, extra balance. We could tap that toe down if we need. We still got our chair where we could see it and touch it if we need a balance check. All right, two more doubles. Now swing for a home run. Four, three, two, switch. Four, three, two, four bases. Home, first, second, third base. We start at home, then we run to first, then we run to second, then third. And we end up back at home. I hope. No sliding today. Hmm. One more time on the right and the left. Oh, I started to feel that a lot on my thighs. So if you did, shake it out. Tell me how you're feeling on that scale of one to 10 for intensity. Say it loud, I'm out in, in right field. <laughs> okay. Hopefully you can talk. That's a good sign that you're not exercising too hard. But hopefully you can't sing the national anthem operatically. And hopefully you want to balance more with a little hamstring curl. Behind your chair, in your low stance, just kick up your heels a bit. Don't kick your couch. I move a little further. You can pop those biceps. Or you can row, it's up to you. Sink low into that little athletic stance and add a little pump. Bending your knees ever so slightly strengthens your leg muscles and adds a little bit more um, cardio output to this movement. Strengthening our heart more. But you can make it little as well and still get the benefits. Are you ready to double up? Here we go. Two here. Two here. You can balance by tapping your toe down or putting your hand on the chair. Or you can challenge yourself. 
Pull the navel in, keep the head and chest lifted. That best posture will give you better balance, better breathing. It also gives you better confidence and exudes a, a feeling of confidence to those around you. Okay. Let's take a break and get on this beat. We're gonna hit a home run. Four on the right leg. Four, three, two. Other side. Four, three, two. Let's do it again. Four, three, two. Switch. Four, three, two. I need my chair today. Four, three, two. Switch. Four, three, two. One more side. Time each side. And switch. Woo! I'm working up a little bit of a sweat here. How are you doing? Do you want to try this one more time? Please say yes, but if you said no, thanks, you're right. You can have a seat, take a breather. There's always another inning. All right, let's just kick left and right. Or you can put your heels out and tap them down. But I'm gonna to pretend to jump rope. I still got my chair there. I could just touch it lightly with my right and then still move that rope with my left. These are our singles. Okay, four more. Three, two, how about double up? Two on the left, two on the right. Remember, you can tap your heel down if you need. You can touch that chair. Just do your best. Doubles. Good. Two more doubles. Let's try a home run. Four, three, two, switch. Four, three, two. We've been going at tempo. Four, three, two. Maybe we could try it double time. Let's see. Four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one. Four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one. Good thing I got my chair. How about you? Two more home runs. Now doubles. Two here, two here, two here, two here. Two more doubles. And how about singles? Single, 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 single. Red hot pepper. Did you ever play that game? <laughs> it's been a while. Deep breath, assess your perceived exertion. On a scale of one to 10, where are you? We're gonna do this one more time, if you like, behind our chair, strengthening our hips, starting with our basic athletic little mini squat. Single hips, right and left. You can open out your wingspan or not. Four more singles. Keep that foot dorsiflexed. Let's try doubles. Two on the right, two on the left. Pull the navel in. Keep that foot dorsiflexed and lead with the outer edge of the foot. That'll help strengthen those hip abductors. Are you ready for four, three, two, one, four, three, two, now let's take the right and hold and balance. Ooh, how about the left? I wove in a little bit of these fun baseball uh, themed music. Hope you enjoy it. I felt that in my hips. If you did and you want to enjoy a stretch before we sit down and work on strength again, go ahead and get that hip stretched out by Putting your weight into one leg mostly, pushing through that ball and socket hip point to the side gently. And also, while we're on our feet, let's enjoy a calf stretch. Walking that heel back, pacing it on the ground. These are just suggestions, and if you thought at any time you needed to do one of those stretches earlier or later, by all means, do it slowly, safely, mindfully. We never want to be herky-jerky or ballistic with our stretches. We know now that 
when we bounce through a stretch, we're more likely to injure a muscle or a joint, and we don't want an injury. Indeed, the reason we're exercising together today is to reduce our injury rate. And the best strength exercise for you to remain independent is walking and squatting. So let's get our feet close to your chair. Do your best. We all have to get up and down off of low seats and cars and sometimes our vehicles are a little lower than we like. So strengthening our thighs and our hip muscles, pulling our core in, breathing, keeping our weight even in both legs is going to help us with our activities of daily living. So let's have a sip of water. Stepping to the side, leaning to the side, supporting with those strong abdominals and your arm. And it never hurts to stay hydrated. Indeed, one of the main causes of hospitalization is dehydration. And as it warms up outside, especially for seniors, especially if we're wearing a mask and a hat and sunscreen, we might get overheated. So it's a good habit to bring some water in a BPA-free, non-breakable, as I demonstrated earlier, <laughs> container. I'm not a big fan of the bottled water for a number of reasons. It's not kind to the environment and nor is it to your body. So get yourself a really nice one. They make some nice powder, steel powder coated ones as well. Um, so yeah, have a couple. All right, I was gonna look, see what strength exercises the coach had picked out for us today. <laughs> oh yeah, we're gonna use our weight to do some one arm rows and a very challenging exercise called a lunge. But don't worry, we're gonna take it one step at a time, okay? So grab your weight, and if you don't have a weight, that's fine. Sort of scooch over to the right side of your chair. Hold on to your chair with your left hand, and get your right leg back into this split stance lunge. Now some of us have arthritis in the ball of the toe, foot, and that might hurt, so you know, you could turn it out, or you can sit however you're comfy. But supporting on that chair or your lap, Reach, pull your navel in, keep your back bone long and strong, and just row. Keeping that jug or weight close to your body, breathing. This one arm row is a very natural movement. I feel like I've been doing it in my yard <laughs> too much sometimes. Did I ever tell you the garden? Gardening is my toughest sport. If I wasn't a regular exerciser, I tell you, that garden would get a, the better of me most days. All right, so this is our one arm row, strengthening the bicep, upper and rear shoulder and back. Now, just hold that jug close to your body and dig your feet in, hold on to your chair and see how it feels to pretend to stand up. If it didn't feel good, don't do it. If it felt fine, come all the way up and go all the way down, and then you've got the option of combining or just doing a second set of rows seated, digging your feet into the ground, tightening those muscles, breathing. This is a big whole body exercise. So I'm just gonna give it my two more best repetitions. That's one time through the exercise. And of course, we gotta do the other side. But before we do, let's put something in between, shall we? Let's focus on our core. Sitting at the edge of your chair, you can just cradle that weight close to your body. Tuck your tailbone under and lean back. Whoa! And then slide forward. Now, if you want, you can add some rotation. You can rotate to the right and look we'll over that right shoulder. Keep that navel pulling in. Likewise on the left. Now, we're doing a little bit of a rainbow with our rib cage. 
If you wanted to make it a little more challenging, you could make that jug come away from your body a bit. Breathe. If you want to make it even more challenging, you could take it way up high. But slow and controlled with your rainbow. Oh, this is hard for me. I want it to be appropriately challenging for you. And what does that mean, actually? Nothing should hurt, but it should feel difficult to finish those last couple repetitions. You should feel a little wobbly and glad that it's done. <laughs> All right, as promised, we're going to get that left leg over to the left side. Scoot your hips slightly to the left. Support with the right, and we're going to do our left one-armed rows with the left arm. That makes sense. Get that left leg back. Back going long and strong. Brace and breathe. Hinge halfway forward, perhaps, and then row. I like to exhale at the top of the movement, but you can breathe however is best for you. Just keep that back long and strong. Squeezing the backs of the shoulder blades together and pointing the elbow back to really get the rear muscles that hold our body up strong for best posture, keep us from slumping. We're gonna get those muscles stronger. Now, take a break with your one arm row. See how it feels to dig your heels and the all 10 toes in, actually your rear heels off the ground for most of us. And if that felt fine, see how it feels to get all the way up. We're in a good position if we lose our balance to sit back down. Do you want to combine them? Up you go, and down and tap. This is a big, big exercise. I'm trying to reach you where you're at safely in your home. If you've been doing these exercises regularly, oh, I can't wait to see you in person performing these movements like a professional. All right, a couple more. And I feel really done with that. Wow. All right. We work those pulling muscles. Let's add back just a little bit for our chest. This one, um, actually it's more of the fronts of our shoulders. We're going to start with our feet wide, hips halfway back in our chair, heels touching the chair. And just keep your back long and strong, but hinge slightly forward and let the weight dangle. We're not going to stand up if we don't want to, but that will be an option, otherwise known as the stand up, sit down, squat, squat, squat game. Now, we're going to lift that weight, elbows leading, and then down. If that feels good, you can take your heels in, pretend to get up, and if that felt great, go ahead and get all the way up. Now, if you really want to challenge, we're going to do a little Olympic press. So we're going down, bringing it close to our body, and then press. If the grip feels funny for you, you could place one hand underneath for a couple repetitions. And then if you wanted, you could switch for the last couple of repetitions. This is like lifting up that heavy box and putting it on the shelf. For me, I'm putting away my winter clothes. Whew. All right, we are done with our weights, so let's step to the side. Let's just support the spine and get another sip of water. Boy, we've really gone through quite a bit today, but I want to bring our heart rate of breathing back down and do a little bit more balance work because balance is so key. And if we practice, we'll get better at it. Here's to that. OK. 
Okay, this little balance routine is one we've done before. We're going to imagine a little personal balance beam or tightrope that runs just behind our chair. Okay? So catch your breath and take a nice deep breath. Opening your heart, opening your chest and shoulders, and then exhale and curl. So we have to set ourselves up for success with this. I'm going to suggest that you imagine that balance beam just as you did with your base path as a maybe three foot tightrope or balance beam. And you begin with your right arm outstretched, touching that chair. Begin with your best posture. And all we're gonna do here is take our right foot and step toe to heel or close. Left foot, toe to heel. And then right foot, toe to heel. Stop here because otherwise we'll fall off the balance beam and we won't have the chair. So let's do a little swing of that left leg using our cross crawl oppositional arm. And then we're going to go backwards. Careful, careful. Toe ball heel. Toe ball heel. Toe ball heel. Weight is in our right leg. I mean, sorry, our left leg. And we're going to move that right leg through that swing from the hip. Slow and controlled. If your balance is good, you can. I had trouble coordinating my limbs. All right, let's take it forward again. Got our chair if we need it. And let's swing through with the other leg. Pulling the navel in, focusing on a point. Maybe six to ten feet in front of you will help you. And taking it back. And then that other leg. If you wanted to make this exercise safely more challenging, you need that chair. You could look to the left, look to the right, keep that hand close to the chair, and look to the left, look to the right. And that makes it really hard because we're changing the visual input. And you could do the same going backwards, which is even harder for me. So make sure you can see that. <laughs> I had trouble coordinating my arms and legs there. Did you see that? This stop is truly challenging. And if we do our best regularly, our balance and our body systems can improve. And you know which one is the most likely to improve? Your brain. So keep in the game, stay active, keep trying new things, but do them safely, regularly. Okay, we're gonna slow it down and stretch a bit. If you're already on your feet, let's get that best calf stretch again. This time I'm gonna use a wall, and I would encourage you to use a sturdy wall or a post in your, in your house. And just work one leg back, paste that heel on the ground. And lean forward and enjoy a gentle calf stretch on the right and on the left. Take your time. Remember, no bouncing. Don't go too fast. Ah, that was good. Now, we can complete our total body workout with some seated stretches. And to be quite honest, when I'm doing my own workout, I'm pretty good about warming up. And then if it's an athletic game or gardening, I'm pretty good at pacing myself. But honestly, 
Sometimes I get in a hurry and I want to skip the stretch. And quite honestly, I feel worse when I don't stretch. And the best time for you to stretch is when you want to, but particularly when your muscles, tendons, and ligaments are warm, more elastic, at the end of your workout. And this is my favorite seated stretch. If it's not your favorite, substitute your favorite. This is a great one. Seated sideways, perhaps facing the right side of your room, left cheek off of the chair, hinge forward and support your spine as you gently, slowly work that left leg back. Slowly sit as tall as you comfortably can and let the knee drift down. And you get a great front of the thigh and hip stretch. Just slow your breath and enjoy this. Relax your feet. Just let them feel heavy, sinking down toward the ground. And inhale, letting your arm and your chest and your head rise up to the skies. When you're ready, if you should choose, you could stretch through the left side of your body and the left upper arm by hinging that elbow. Patting yourself between the shoulder blades, lifting the elbow, breathing, and when you're done, easing out of that stretch. We're going to do a gentle, mindful spinal rotation here today. So keep the tip of your head, the crown of your head, pointing straight up, tailbone down, and exhale as you rotate over your right shoulder, turning, keeping the head stretching high, and breathe deep. You could feel the ribs and the spine open up as you breathe in and exhale, unwinding. Well, let's do that on the other side, if you like. Now, rotation of the spine should always be done very slowly. And if you've had any spinal fusion, or if you have any pain at all, I hope you know you're not going to do this. You can do the stretches that feel best for you. Indeed, turning to face the left side of the room, hinging forward, working that right leg back. You could just sit here and breathe, and that would be a great exercise. Slow your breath. Think of breathing in through your nose. Exhale out through your mouth or your nose, and just let that right knee drift down. Feel the weight of it lengthening the tight, strong, long muscles on the front of your hip and thigh. Relax that foot. Inhale up when you're ready. And when you're ready, you can exhale and stretch through the right side of your body, letting the right elbow hinge and patting yourself again. Excellent. Exhale, inhale, sit tall, take your time, be mindful. Let the crown of your head rise up to the sky and the tailbone drift down. As you keep that vertical posture in your spine and gently rotate, looking over your left shoulder. You can even stretch your eyes and that's a good muscle stretch. Inhale, fill your lungs from the bottom to the top. And exhale and unwind. Those are good stretches. All right, facing forward, let's get our neck and spine and chest opened a little bit, sitting at the front edge of your chair. Go ahead and take a deep inhale, filling your lungs from the bottom to the top, opening your spine to a slight arch if, you, if it feels good, and then let's close and do the reverse. Interlace those fingers, tuck the tailbone under, drawing chin gently towards your chest. Let's take another deep breath, and this time, 
Let those arms come down and find a place where you can just latch gently onto your chair. Keep all four legs of your chair on the floor. Lean forward. Tailbone back, crown of head up. And your spine defines a long, elegant diagonal. As you exhale, if you like, you can tilt your ear to one shoulder and enjoy a stretch on that opening. Breathe deep. And then come back to your beautiful, long, elegant diagonal breathing, lengthening your body. And then exhale and enjoy a stretch on the other side. Never forceful, particularly when it comes to our neck or any joints where you feel compromised. So that's all I have for you today. But remember I told you I was going to explain the connection between the Cincinnati Reds and Yellow Springs? Well, about 152 years ago, the Cincinnati Reds or the Red Legs, as they were named then, were scheduled to come up to Antioch College in 1869. The Reds, being the first professional baseball team, were challenged by the Antioch Nine, and they were going to come in May of 1869, but they got rained out. Bummer. Well, you can still enjoy baseball. There's a few more home games for the Yellow Springs High School team, and you can buy from the Yellow Springs High School Athletic Boosters, and they have a website, you can buy a special edition Chris Rainey ball cap with his initials on the back because the team dedicated their whole season to their beloved coach and educator Chris Rainey um, in honor of his life and his coaching and his teaching. So whatever you do, just keep it safe and simple and bye for now. Hope to see you outdoors, masked and socially distanced soon.